Hello, podcast listeners and coffee drinkers from around the world. Jordan River here with another episode of the Coffee Health and Science Podcast. Thank you for tuning in today. Before we get started with today's show, please share the Coffee Health and Science Podcast. Spread the show. It's how we grow. Make sure you're subscribed. Give us a good rating and review if you would. It really, really helps us out. I appreciate it so much. I also want to encourage you to send in your questions for the upcoming Ask Dr. Coffee series. We've had these Q&As, and if you want to get some coffee questions answered, Dr. Coffee is the perfect person for the job. All you need to do is email puritycoffeepodcast at gmail.com, and we will answer your questions live on air. Stay tuned for the Ask Dr. Coffee series. Today's episode, though, is all about amazing coffee facts. It's kind of a coffee history mixed with a factoid compilation episode. We're exploring some fascinating figures about coffee, as well as some astounding factoids that will reshape the way that you look at the bean and the brew. We're also going to be looking at a popularized statistic at the end of the episode and scrutinizing the statistics accuracy. Listeners of our last few episodes will know the one that I'm talking about. So we're going to dive deep today into coffee facts. It's just you and I today, one-on-one, just the way I like it when I'm downloading knowledge to my listeners. So let's get started with modern coffee consumption. Globally, humans consume about 2.25 billion cups of coffee every day. That's over 158 million gallons of coffee consumed daily. Americans account for consuming 400 million cups of coffee per day. The average American spends around $20 a week on coffee, which totals about $1,100 per year. But Americans do not top the list of coffee drinkers, not even close to it. Finland consumes the most coffee in the world. Some studies estimating that Finns drink over 26 pounds of coffee annually per capita. That's incredible. The Finns are just guzzling coffee. Starbucks is the number one most popular coffee chain and company in both America and around the world. No surprise there. Starbucks selling an estimated average of 8 million cups of coffee every single day. And that is across their 31,256 stores located around the world, with nearly 15,000 of those stores residing in America. Let's move on to some coffee factoids that you need to know and that may surprise you. Coffee, before it was drank as a beverage, was originally chewed. That's right. Now, those of you who listen to the coffee history episodes of this podcast, you know the legend of the origin of coffee, the beverage, dating back to Ethiopia about a thousand years ago with the story of the goat herder Kaldi discovering the energetic beans when his goats ate it and the sleepy holy monk who was passing by and happened to take these uh, seeds from these coffee cherries and actually brew them into a cup of joe. Well, if you're like me, you probably wondered how coffee wasn't a larger part of human culture before this time. What, was, what, what were we doing with the coffee cherries before that? How come we didn't discover this sooner, the power of these magical cherries? And the truth is, we did discover the powers of these cherries way before then. It turns out that we just hadn't yet dried the seeds, ground them, and brewed them into a drink that we now recognize as coffee. You see, according to a number of historians, it's said that the first African tribes to actually consume coffee did so by grinding the berries down and adding in things like animal fat. They would then roll the mixture into edible, caffeinated balls of energy. So before coffee was a drink to be sipped, It was a sort of energy-boosting ball of fat and caffeine that was chewed on for a boost. The animal fat part, I'm a little skeptical about, but I'm interested in this nonetheless. And I have to look into this uh, more, these old, old recipes of coffee cherry energy balls. I really like that one. Here's an interesting one. Instant coffee dates back nearly 250 years 
That's how long people have been working on some sort of instantly available coffee beverage. Forms of what we would recognize as instant coffee made their first appearances in England in 1771. But the process was refined and evolved over the years with Japanese chemist Satori Kato inventing the first water-soluble coffee all the way up in 1901. That was a huge breakthrough when it comes to caffeinating on the go, caffeinating quickly, and introducing coffee into the workforce. Eventually, the first mass-produced instant coffee was introduced and patented in the United States, and that was nine years later in 1910, supposedly created by a man by the name of George Constant Washington. I like that. George Constant Washington. Not Constance, Constant. <laughs> instant coffee continued to evolve all the way up until the 1960s, when eventually the freeze-drying process took over, which is still practiced today. I personally would have never guessed that instant coffee was over 200 years old. The coffee break. Everybody loves a good coffee break. Did you know that the coffee break was supposedly invented in Wisconsin? Stoughton, Wisconsin claims to be the very first place where the workforce coffee break was officially instated. Every single year, the town even throws a coffee break festival to honor this massive industrial contribution. Local lore asserts that the area's coffee-loving Norwegian immigrants invented the coffee break in the late 19th century, and it was adopted across the board. So if your coffee break is your respite, you may have Stoughton, Wisconsin, and their Norwegian roots to thank for that one. Here is an astounding one. I love this one. Webcams are so common. Webcams are included in every laptop now. They're just built in. Back in the day, you'd have those external webcams. And you can use this webcam to stream video across the internet. How cool. Have you ever wondered what the first webcam was like? Why the first webcam was ever invented? Well, it's going to surprise you. Folks at the University of Cambridge, very, very smart people over there, uh, working around the clock. Well, they needed their coffee. Apparently, the University of Cambridge ran on coffee. They loved coffee, and they hated the feeling of finding an empty coffee pot. So the first ever webcam invented at the University of Cambridge was actually invented with the sole purpose of checking on the status of the coffee pot so they could know that it was time to rebrew and re-up so they were never running out of coffee at the University of Cambridge. Can you believe it? What's now the most ubiquitous piece of technology tying us together, especially during pandemic, was originally invented to keep an eye on the level of the coffee pot. Thank you, University of Cambridge, for that wonderful contribution, and thank you, coffee, for inspiring them. Now, it wouldn't be a coffee fact exploration if we didn't look into the origins of some coffee terminology. Some of these might surprise you. I really, really like the geography and the history tied into these names and words. Let's start with the word mocha. Mocha gets its name from a city on the Red Sea located in Yemen. Until the 17th century, nearly all of the world's coffee was produced in the Middle East, and nearly all of that coffee was transported via ships through mocha. Mocha was the world's number one coffee economy, and beans exported from mocha became so popular in Europe that mocha became a slang term for any high-grade specialty coffee. Now, what about the word cappuccino? This next one is truly fascinating. Instead of deriving its name from a specific locale, cappuccino gets its name from a special group of holy men. You see, the cappuccino was named after the Capuchin friars, monks, holy men, members of the Order of Friars Minor Capuchin, a religious order of Franciscan friars within the Catholic Church who arose to prominence around 1525. And the drink, cappuccino, was named after them because its color resembled the color of the cappuccino robes that the holy men would wear. So the tint of the cappuccino coffee resembled the color of the cappuccino friar's robes, therefore cappuccino. This link between holy men and coffee is so fascinating to me. Also interesting to date that back to 1525, although I believe... I'm definitely not an expert on the history of the Capuchin Friars that uh, they were around before then. Let's stay in Italy and discuss espresso. Espresso. The word espresso comes from the Italian name for coffee. 
in full cafe espresso, literally pressed out coffee. It translates to expressed coffee. And it's interesting because many people hear the alleged mispronunciation espresso, but those people may be the ones who need to do some research because it shows in many, many old texts lists of variations of espresso as espresso. And this dates all the way back to as far as 1869, people writing about visiting Rome and enjoying a cafe espresso. Interesting. I always thought that was a misnomer myself, but apparently it's a variation and uh, actually accurate to some extent. Let's talk about some health facts. This whole show is about health. I just need I need to include them here quickly, a highlight of health facts about coffee and specifically the disease prevention numbers. Now there's way too many to list, so I literally picked 4 that maybe can stick in your mind that you can uh, share with others if it ever comes up. And I'll go from top to bottom here. Drinking three to five cups of healthy coffee a day can reduce your risk of Alzheimer's by 65%, liver cancer reduction by 40%, 30% reduction of congestive heart failure, and up to a 25% reduction in stroke. Those are incredibly important numbers, pharmaceutical level numbers, and I hope those stick with you guys so that you can share them if somebody could use a a little bit of preventative action from coffee in their life. That's what this show is all about. I've got some odds and ends here, some miscellaneous coffee facts. Let's wrap up with some of these before we get into our controversial coffee topic. Before coffee became widely available, the popular breakfast drink was beer. Oof. Jeez, I don't know how you get anything done with that. In the early days of the United States of America, Americans were typically tea drinkers like the British before them. They teach us here in the States in the history class about the Boston Tea Party, about the symbolism behind dumping the British tea into the harbor. But what they may not have taught you is that this is definitively the turning point for coffee as it became the patriotic choice for your caffeinated morning beverage and replaced tea altogether for the patriotic American citizenry. Scientists have successfully turned coffee into biodiesel. Ooh, you've heard about this on the show. And one day, coffee may be fueling your car. About 20% of coffee mugs from offices contain fecal bacteria. Now, I've heard the... According to these fecal bacteria studies, it seems to me like there's just poop on everything. They're saying it's everywhere. It's all over the bathroom. It's on your coffee mug. It's on your keyboard. I'm not sure about these types of studies. I thought I'd include it because it seemed a bit shocking. But uh, at this point, I'm just jaded with all these fecal bacteria studies. (laughs) And finally, mentioned on this show before, the Guinness World Record holder for the oldest cat to ever live was a 38-year-old cat named Cream Puff who drank coffee every day her entire life. So there you go, folks. Some of those facts were truly enlightening to me, and I hope that you found them interesting. I hope that it changed the way you look at coffee. Before we wrap it up, though, I said I was going to cover a coffee fact that was recently challenged on this podcast. You've heard it said before. I've said it on this show. The fact, the alleged fact, that coffee is the second most traded commodity behind crude oil. This is something that gets thrown around all the time, and I was recently sent an article by our very own Ildi Revy, who doesn't take BS at all. She is, she is all over this type of stuff, and that article was debunking the statement. I wanted to dig in further, and as it turns out, as the article asserted, by any reasonable interpretation of second most traded commodity, Coffee does not land in the number two spot. If you look up top traded commodities by volume, the top five list consists of oil, twice, two different types of oil, steel, soybeans, and iron. Coffee lands all the way down at number 98 on that particular list. Now, there are some arguments about futures tradings and how the coffee futures get traded more. And even by those standards, it didn't look like coffee was landing at number two. It seems that this myth stems from one report that supposedly dates back to the 1970s, stating that coffee was the second most traded commodity during one of those years. And some say that that 
particular report was actually restricted to Latin American countries, which would make much more sense, making the claim vastly different than the soundbite that we've come to hear over and over. So I actually want to apologize for having said this before on the show. I, I want to I reiterate also that although coffee doesn't land at number two or even in the top 90 highest traded commodities, it, it doesn't make it less important. It's still very critically important. It's still a huge industry. That's okay that it's not number two. It still accounts for tens of billions of dollars of trade. It props up the economies of many different vibrant, vibrant cultures. Nations that grow coffee are often impo impoverished, and the coffee trade helps them earn and sustain a living for themselves and their loved ones. Truly, truly amazing cultures thriving off of the coffee trade. It's, it may not be the biggest or the second biggest, but it's, it's big enough. You know, It's not the number two champion of the world. But it's plenty impressive on its own to me. And not to mention, basically the entire human race runs on coffee. And that is a fact if you look around you today. What an awesome exploration this was. Thank you for spending time with me. I hope you enjoyed this one-on-one -on -one episode. They're a little bit different. I do them occasionally. I'm looking for another coffee history topic so you can look forward to more coffee history episodes. I just want to thank you guys for being such awesome listeners. The coffee tree kits are coming through. People are posting their pictures. Thank you to everyone who signed up for those. Uh, they are being sent out now. You may be on the second round of uh, shipments. I appreciate your patience. I'm excited to get mine going. This is just such a fun show that I've created. And again, I want to thank you all. You all make it possible. And I look forward to bringing you more awesome coffee content in the months and years to come. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time on the Coffee Health and Science Podcast. This is Jordan River signing off saying, have an extraordinary day. Bye-bye.